Hello everyone, this is Heather and this is going to be part three to my food allergy series. This is also in relation to a couple of other videos I just posted which are one called fertility caused by bacteria hmm. and another one death by breads are toxic molds infecting our grains. Hmm. There's also a video called bread mania in which I talk about folate being added to our bread and how that can contribute to mania and mental illness and that's just because of the folate in that video not even because of the grain issues that I'm about to talk about so right now it is like 12:48 in the morning and um, yeah I ate a bunch of grains for dinner and I guess I'm having trouble sleeping so I've been researching a lot about rheumatoid arthritis lately and um, for a dear friend of mine and then of course I'm always researching about infertility because that's my plague and um, I've gone back and forth on grains a lot and I have fought myself through some autoimmune type symptoms not rheumatoid by any means but um, joint pain acne which isn't technically autoimmune but um, digestive problems, mood swings, and just crazy problems that I'm sure all of you are very familiar with. And I have just come across some wonderful information. I really want you all to check out the website glutenfreesociety.org. This isn't your average go gluten-free kind of thing. Yes, he is saying go gluten-free, but he is explaining to you in a very clear way why all grains not just the bread and so go ahead and turn it off now and go you know eat your cupcake just kidding why all grains okay not just bread have allergy and inflammation promoting proteins glutens isn't really an accurate term prolamines is really the accurate term now I personally I know that's redundant I personally I have tested positive via scratch test for corn and the reason I got the scratch test is because I had a ton of digestive symptoms and just you know acne which I have here and mark my word this is it check it out I'm going grain free okay um, from this point on not before now <laughs> anyways and so I figured okay this blood test showed I was allergic to a lot of foods and if you've seen part one and part two you will know that my theory which is backed up by about a bazillion scientists a physiologist and nutritionists and everybody else uh, most people who have brains that if you're allergic to some foods in your blood these proteins are getting in your blood they have to get in there through your intestines so why are your intestines not functioning properly and you know I have and through my education I wanted to figure out what reaction was going on in my intestines so I proceeded to a scratch test and um, I keep pointing to here because they did it on my arm for the 10 most popular foods and corn came back positive so I told myself okay corn is my only true allergy so it's gonna stop causing these welts in my intestines so I can eat all these other foods and then they're not gonna hit my blood and so those other ones don't matter well that is not entirely true so I hope you're watching this part three all of you because Dr. Osborne from the gluten-free society of glutenfreesociety.org breaks down how all of these grains containing these allergy slash inflammation promoting proteins called prolamines not necessarily glutens can cause this reaction he breaks it down very well now I also got tested for celiac disease because of that blood test that came back with wheat as an allergy and it came back negative and that was another reiteration to me that I could eat my grains um, and I was just going to avoid corn. But he talks about how that can be a false negative. Not that you are that you really do have celiac disease, but that celiac disease is not the only issue when it comes to grain sensitivity, intolerance, or allergies. So, for instance, the celiac test that you probably got or would get 
from Quest or LabCorp. They test for two specific alleles called the HLA-DQ2 and the HLA-DQ8 genes. They're going to give you a response of yes or no. They're not going to show you the actual lab. And there are some non-celiac genes, which are the HLA-DQ1 and HLA-DQ3 genes that most labs do not test for. He offers this testing on his site. I'm not going to bother with it uh, because I already tested positive in the blood test for wheat, which he specifically said is the specific prolamine called gliadin, which is why I cannot tolerate whole grains. And I will break out worse than this if I eat, eat them. Um, now, there are a lot of issues that these foods can cause. And rheumatoid arthritis specifically, which I've been looking into because my dear friend is suffering from it. And she's just like a wonderful person and I want to help her. She, um, yeah, anyways, rheumatoid is, has been connected to gluten and through studies, and so has a ton of other issues, including infertility and all of these things. So the irony is that my issue is the infertility, not the rheumatoid, but um, the irony is that I thought that I was covered by the blood test and the scratch test and the celiac test. And Dr. Osborne really breaks down why that may not be enough. So go check out his website. I am officially going grain free. Okay? Now, he does have some great videos that explain the proteins and how much each different grain has. The, as far as percent wise, like percent of proteins in the grain, um, Rice and oats have the least, and I do have a bunch of rice and oats in my house, so I'm probably going to wean myself off of my millet uh, and other gluten-free products that I have in my house with the rice and oats, and then I'm going to go completely grain-free from there. Now, nutritionally speaking, I am studying for an a master's in nutrition, and I want to say you don't need wheat and gluten and grains to get a nutritionally well-balanced diet. And, you know, the USDA is <coughs> being paid off. Anyways, so if you want to make sure you get your minerals, you can get them from nuts, okay? Um, if you want to make sure you get your carbs, you can get them from fruits and starchy vegetables, which some starch is actually good for you, like potatoes. And sweet potatoes are really good. And if you want to get your fiber, mm, vegetables, sorry, and your B vitamins, meat. So you don't need grains. So, you know, just those other foods in combination cover the gap that this whole wheat full of acrylamides and dough conditioners and genetic hybridization and allergy, autoimmune inflammation causing ergot infested grains can, you know, give you. So good luck to you. Um, I want you to mark this day. I want you to see my skin and how horrible it is. Okay, you see that? It's awful. And it's all here, which is hormone related. Now, is this still bacteria related like the infertility caused by bacteria video? Yes, it is. Grains get in, inflame your gut, cause these large proteins to get through your villi, okay? Once they get through your villi, your immune system goes, what is this? <laughs> Attacks it. And then your immune system is attacking something that isn't a germ or a virus or a parasite and um, gets out of whack, especially with perpetual ingestion of these things. And then you actually encounter a virus or a bacteria or a mold or a parasite or a yeast, and your immune system is out of whack. So um, then you have a chronic infection or you have chronic inflammation of your thyroid, or you have chronic inflammation of your liver, like in me, I don't drink hardly at all. Like, yes, every now and then, but I was deficient in B12, as you could see in my other video where I talk about the tingling in my fingers, which is gone, and it's been like, what, a week? Because I, I took B12, I think it's gone. Um, well, you know, gl grains can cause this 
liver that doesn't store vitamins like it should, like the zinc that my body wasn't storing. So I'm going to do this, and I want you all to just check out my acne right now for witness. And, um, and of course, my infertility is another thing that, you know, I do pray for, even though it's selfish to pray for yourself. I do that. But um, also, my friend with rheumatoid, who's like a wonderful person, I pray that maybe this might help her if she decides to go grain-free, and I pray that it will also help you. And speaking of praying in the Bible, yes, the Bible talks about, you know, in Ezekiel 4, 9, this one verse, it talks about take your barley and your oats and put it together and make this. Well, these grains are not the grains of those days. Um, they've been hybridized, and the gluten is no longer at 5%. It's at 55 to 60%. These are processed much differently. Go to Dr. Osborne's website and you will see. And then, of course, there's the issue of adding folate, which is going to perpetuate a B12 deficiency and cause mania. Mental illness runs in my family. I don't know if you can tell. Ha <laughs> ha. But um, it can also, you know, go in your brain and cause that. So it's just a whole bunch of mess that I'm just going to get away from, and I have no problem giving up anything that will prolong my life and increase the quality of my life, or for my son, or for my husband, or for my family, and I hope you'll consider the same. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye.